Good afternoon, guys. Uh, yeah, another video. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about um, how to play the game, uh, at least the, the first phase. So um, let me see if I can zoom in on the text. Um, yeah, every game round uh, starts with determining the number of aid camps you're going to use. Um, AD camps are generally um, uh, your lower grade officers that were used by your commanders in chief uh, to send orders to your brigade uh, generals or your divisional commanders um, to relay orders. Um, yeah, and uh, I translated that to the rules uh, to, uh, to, to better your chances of, uh, of giving an order. Um, so, uh, determining number of AD camps. This is uh, something both sides do at the same time. Roll 1 D5, as I call it. Uh, it's just a D10 divided by 2. So in this case, you roll 2, which means you get one AD camp. Uh, and you always add uh, one extra. So it's D5 plus one AD camps. Now your aid camps you can use to uh, to improve your uh, your order score. Uh, I will explain that later on. Uh, next up is determine initiative. So this is not a regular I go you ga uh, go game. Um, uh, at the at the start of every round, uh, players need to check who goes first, which side goes first. So uh, you roll a day ten in this case. In this case, it would be a six. Uh, but before you roll, you may uh, decide to use a number of Ada camps to better your score or to better your chances. Um, and that's called seizing the initiative. So if you really need to be first in the next round, in, in this current round, uh, yeah, you can offer some of your or offer is not the right word, but you can use some of your uh, aid camps to, uh, yeah, to add to your dice roll for rolling for initiative. So, for example, I just rolled a six, um, and and let let's say uh, you're gonna use two aid camps, uh, you would have effectively an eight. Um, how many aid camps you use is up to each side, and it's the way. Uh, we do it is um, uh, it's this kind of a, a sort of a, uh, a gambling factor in in this case. Um, players decide amongst themselves. Uh, well, we we really want to use. Uh, we really need the, to have the initiative this turn. So let's use three of our six eight camps, for example. You do this um, well secretly. Uh, yeah under the table, for example, uh, show uh, each other, you know, let's, let's use three uh, aid camps. Um, and it's just a matter of not letting know, uh, not letting your opponent know how many aid camps you've used. Um, so there's a, that's a bit of a risk. There's a bit of a, of a fun gambling factor in that. Um, um, yeah, which will, will eventually come out, of course, um, when everyone has rolled for initiative. Um, next up is the uh, when, when when it is determined who goes first. Um, uh, yeah, we, we go into the normal phase, and into the normal phases, and in this case, um, we start by with rally phase. At at the start of each round, you can try to rally your troops. Every uh, every unit that is uh, fleeing the field, um, you may try to rally. Now, how that works, uh, I will uh, explain that in a later video. Um, yeah, that's not important for now. Second uh, phase is the artillery phase. Um, Stuart from Miniature Realms has already uh, said something about it. Um, generally, in, in the American Civil War uh, battles, um, troop movement was preceded by artillery fire. So I decided to implement that rule in, in, in the rule book. 
um, which will it, it, it is an optional phase uh, by the way um, and it is only meant to fire your artillery pieces so you you can choose to fire your artillery in the artillery phase or regularly in the shooting phase which is uh, number five in the in the order of battle um, so followed by the order phase which will like uh, i will explain in this video a little bit about then comes the movement phase the shooting phase and lastly the melee phase Um, here you have a confederate brigade and I just want to explain a little bit about um, yeah, different types of formations so you have your reg regimental uh, formations um, there are, these guys are now deployed in, in line of battle but of course you can deploy them in, uh, in a movement, uh, movement in a marching column like this or in a assault column like this which actually wasn't used that often and especially not by confederates but more by union troops later in the war um, yeah but that's uh, that's for another video again um, there are different different types of maneuvers you can make uh, for example, you can uh, move obliquely, which basically means um, moving within a 90 degree arc, like this. Uh, you can move by the flank, which will, would have allowed troops to quickly uh, yeah, uh, take up another line somewhere else. And it's simply done by uh, putting them in a line like this moving up somewhere else and realigning in a battle uh, a f line of battle like this another fun uh, addition I made is that you can refuse your flank so let's say these guys uh, would have run the risk of uh, being flanked you can choose to uh, refuse a flank like this so you can now shoot with these guys to this side and these guys to their front um, then we have brigade formations now these guys are deployed um, not in a specific brigade formation and there are basically three types that were used uh, often in uh, Civil War battles. Um, one, of them, one of them is in multiple lines. So you have your brigade and troops would be deployed one behind the other, or regiments would be deployed one behind the other to offer support and to quickly, um, well, replace is not the right word, but quickly move beyond the 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 front unit which would have probably uh, suffered a lot of casualties so um, the advantage of having these guys uh, in a brigade formation like this multiple lines is that you can uh, you have a better chance of um, of passing your order test you get a plus one to your uh, to your test um, and troops may uh, overtake the others without penalty. So normally speaking, uh, passing a, a line would uh, cause you to have to test for for that maneuver um, to see if they can uh, you know, go through the other unit. Uh, troops deployed in multiple lines do not have to do that because, uh, well, it's a bit difficult to see like this, but um, because ranges uh, and distances are a bit abstract, but um, yeah 
they have been tra being deployed in this in this fashion. Um, they they have, they would have been trained to uh, to quickly overtake uh, units in their front. So in this the when deployed like this, you can just move them um, through the other unit without any penalties. That's another uh, advantage of having them uh, deployed like this. But of course, one of the downsides is that you can only fire with one regiment uh, because troops in, in, in the back can fire through their, through their mates. Um, another brigade formation is, looks a bit strange, but I can, I'll see if I can catch it with my camera. And that would be a brigade deployed in echelon. No, I can't uh, zoom out any further. Uh, troops would be deployed slanting backwards or forwards like this. Um, and this was done to, uh, to prevent the enemy from um, uh, making a flank attack. Yeah, it looks a bit strange, but it's uh, it was widely used. Um, the advantage of having them like this is that um, they these guys would never count as being outflanked. Um, what outflanking is uh, will be explained later on, but for now, um, yeah. If you've got these guys on your flank, that uh, that flank would be uh, properly uh, protected. And the final formation, oops, you can use is a brigade in attack column. Which again, wasn't used a lot. Uh, and you can also have them like this, uh, two regiments besides each other. This was mostly a Union thing, I think, Emory Upton during the Battle of Petersburg. No, not Petersburg. Um, Cold Harbor? No, it was not Cold Harbor. Spotsylvania. Spotsylvania. He came up with this uh, idea and it was uh, implemented and uh, relatively successful and was used later on as well. Um, how this formation works, that's, that's a little bit more complicated and I will explain that uh, in another video. Um, I see this video is taking uh, up quite some time, so I will uh, shoot another video for uh, the order phase. See you then!